So I've done over 150 fantasy football drafts this summer, unfortunately. But fortunately for you, that means I've got a lot of experience. I see where all the player values are. And I've come to you today humbly with the perfect draft strategy if your draft pick is from 9 to 12. So the back half of the draft, all right? And I'll be honest with you. uh, I think going to a funeral might be more enjoyable than having a later pick in the first round. I've done videos on both one through four. So picks one through four, picks five through eight, both linked down below if you've got picks there. But today we'll be focusing on the back half of the draft. We're going to go round by round. So from round one all the way through 11, letting y'all know what I see in terms of Uh, value of player pockets, where I think you should be attacking specific players based on sleepers, full PPR ADP. All right. I think it's a good mix between paid leagues like underdog and best ball 10 and then non-paid leagues like ESPN and Yahoo. So sleeper, I think is the perfect middle ground for what a real, you know, semi sharp fantasy football draft will look like. All right. So if you've got picks nine, 10, 11, or 12, buckle up tuck your shirt in as always i am pre-tuck so don't even worry about it we're going to get into round one and two right now because you're at the turn the turn is just having multiple picks in a very close proportionate manner all right so if you're picking at the 9 10 11 or 12 uh you don't necessarily have a lot of value in the second round here so What I've found so far is that your best approach is really splitting the difference here at wide receiver and running back. You know, this type of strategy or the the strategies that I give off today to you, what I need y'all to understand is one, don't harp on the exact players I pick. Think about the strategy per se, right? If I give you all these options to pick from, if I'm like, hey, split the difference between a running back and a wide receiver here, and I end up taking Jameer Gibbs over Jonathan Taylor, don't fret, all right? If you like JT over Jameer Gibbs, then do that because I'm going to be explaining it to you, the strategy, in terms of where the real ADP is now. So I'll give you options in in where you can choose. But if your league is full PPR and you're starting three wide receivers and two running backs, obviously we're going to lean a little bit heavier towards the wide receiver type of thing. If we are half PPR where you're starting two running backs and two wide receivers, then running backs become more valuable and players that score more touchdowns like running backs are probably moved up in the rankings a little bit. So at the one-two turn, again, we are going to split the difference between a running back and a wide receiver here. When we look at the players available at ADP, we have AJ Brown at the nine. I don't expect him to fall too much further. So you probably have to have the nine or the 10 there. We've got Garrett Wilson at the 112. Puka just had some injury related news that he's going to be week to week with the knee injury. Uh, I am typically the dude who is completely off of any players that have injuries, you know, August, but it is August 5th. So I will keep an open mind to Puka right now. If he drops significantly in drafts, like an underdog, he starts going in the third round. I'm going to be scooping that up. All right. So the reports say it's not that serious of an injury, but week to week is something to monitor right now. He's got some time before camp. My rule of thumb when it comes to injured players in August is I need them to participate in at least three to four consecutive full practices before the season starts, all right? Because if players enter the year at less than 100%, they have a much higher likelihood of getting re-injured, right? We don't predict injuries. I don't know if someone's going to get injured in the season, but I do know this is scientific. I'm only technically a doctor, but I could tell you that if you go into the year at less than 100% and you're stepping onto the field with dudes who are sprinting and hitting you at 100%, your likelihood of getting hurt is very high. So I need to see about a week full of practice from Puka at full speed for me to be comfortable drafting him anywhere near this ADP. So we'll kind of take him off the board there. Garrett Wilson's at the 112. Jonathan Taylor's at the 201. Gibbs at the 111. Marvin Harrison Jr. at the 203. And you have Saquon and Kyron Williams going at the 202, 204-ish. So I would split the difference here for all intents and purposes for this video. We are going to pick two players at each turn to build an actual lineup that you guys can see in real time as we're going round by round. I will say I know a lot of people are going to be scared off Kyron Williams at this price all the way up on the 204. I tend to think he has league winning upside. If you end up taking Kyron Williams here, just make sure you draft Blake Corum in the 10th round, right? He is the absolute for sure, no doubt about it, handcuff to Kyron Williams, and you don't have to pay a 6th, 7th, 8th round price for that. So this is the best case scenario, in my opinion, for a dude like that. So we'll take Uh, Garrett Wilson at the 112 and then Jonathan Taylor at the 201. So those are our first two picks. Now, when we get to the three, four turn, I think there's a lot of flexibility here. I think there are a lot of uh, directions that you can go in. And I'm going to get a little spicy here. But also at the end of this video, based on all the options I give you, I'm going to give you uh, three different lineup builds that we could have went with based on ADP, based on uh, this strategy and based on 
what could have happened. But for this first one, here's what I'm going to do. All right. If you were lucky enough to draft AJ Brown, you know, you got him at the nine or the 10, then I think Jalen Hurts at the three, four turn here is a no brainer. I want to stack those two. Everything that I'm hearing out of Philly is that Jalen Hurts is throwing the ball as accurate as he's ever during training camp. Kellen Moore coming in being this fast paced, high tempo, running a lot of plays for Philly is a type of offense that I'd love to see installed with the type of athleticism that Philly has. I'm also not worried about Jason Kelsey leaving with Jurgens coming in. You know, there is no worry for me that the tush push is going anywhere. So what I like about this turn is like you're getting Jalen Hurts around discounted relative to where he was picked last year, coming off of a 15 rushing touchdown season. The dude has never had fewer than double digit rushing scores uh, as long as he's been the starter here. And the other thing I like about taking Jalen Hurts here at like the 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, his ADP is at the 3.09, is that even if you didn't get A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith's ADP is the 4.10. So if you're picking at the end of the first round, the 109, the 110, 111, then that 410 ADP of Devontae Smith is going to be gettable every single time for uh, you on the back half of that. And Devontae Smith apparently is having a hell of a fucking camp too. But the other reason that I think uh, it's doable to go with the quarterback wide receiver strategy here for Jalen Hurts specifically is I have Jalen Hurts as my QB1. So I like him here. I like the ability to stack him. And I don't really get a, a warm, fuzzy feeling out of anyone besides Isaiah Pacheco here and uh, at the running back position, at least. And Isaiah Pacheco's ADP is 307. So there's not a high chance that he even falls to you down here at the back of the third. Uh, some other options that you can go with here if you want to double tap wide receivers. Again, if you start three wide receivers and it's full PPR, Jalen Waddle is the 312. Michael Pittman is the 401. Cooper Cup's the 405 as of this taping. But with the Puka news, he's probably going to skyrocket up to like an early third round pick, maybe even a late second round pick. So I don't think it's possible that you'll really get him here. But maybe you're drafting like today, tomorrow, this weekend, and he's still back there. But for this draft for this purpose again we're going to give you some other opportunities or some other variations of this i'm going to go with jalen hurts at the 309 and then devonta smith whose adp is the 410 now i have been preaching throughout the first two videos in this series that i want one of the big five tight ends and unfortunately we probably missed out if we are picking at the back half of the first round by the time you get to like the 5 9 5 10 those those big five guys are gone right we have Laporta, Kelsey, Kincaid, Andrews, and McBride, they're not going to last to the end of the fifth round. If they do, shout out to you and you can take them here. But if you like George Kittle, who I do, or Kyle Pitts, uh, if they're more of your flavor, good news, they'll probably be available here. But I'm going to skip the position now and I'm going to target Jake Ferguson later. Now, the 5 6 turn, there's a ton of value here to stack another tandem of wide receivers that are super underrated, high floor wideouts. Or if you missed out on Jalen Hurts the beginning of the third or just didn't want to go with a QB that early and you went with a Michael Pittman, then Anthony Richardson absolutely plays here because he is the 5'10 and he has obviously elite upside and has a very real chance of fin finishing as a as the QB1 overall. And not just the QB1 overall, but one of those types of like league winning QB1 overall seasons. But because we went Hurts first, we're going to take Amari Cooper at the 509 and then Christian Kirk at the 603. Some other options you could look for, uh, Keenan Allen at the 5'11", Terry McLaurin's going all the way down to 6'08". So guys in that range that are doable. So now you have Garrett Wilson, Devonta Smith, Amari Cooper, and Christian Kirk. So you're talking about your first three wide receivers and probably your first flex. And you also have Jonathan Taylor anchoring your running back position. You have Jalen Hurts atop at the quarterback position. Now, at the round 7-8 turn, this, this stopler right here will be henceforth known as the Jake Ferguson turn. Right. He's got an ADP of 803. So you will be able to get him with either of these picks. This is where you're going to want to just read the room, see what tight ends are available. Maybe, you know, maybe a George Kittle somehow falls to the end of the seventh round. You've got to just know your league. All right. So we're going to grab Jake Ferguson with our eighth round pick. And with our seventh round pick, I'm going to grab my running back too. Najee Harris might be available there. He is the 706. I really like Tony Pollard. The more and more I'm I'm reading about the Titans, the more and more I'm reading about last year's outlook of Tony Pollard, the more I like him this year. And he's going around pick 708, 709, 710. So I think he is gettable here. Regardless, you know, pick your flavor of running back two here. Raheem Mostert is the 712. So I'm going to go with my running back two and my tight end one in Jake Ferguson. So we'll take Raheem Mostert, 712, and Jake Ferguson at the 803. Now, we got round nine and 10 coming up. This is pretty much the last turn that this video will hold for y'all. 
if you drafted Kyron Williams at the one two turn, this would be the time to go grab Blake Corum because his ADP is 1009, meaning you can pretty much get him with either of these picks. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to continue to stack our flex position. So you've got guys like uh, Tajay Spears at the 1001, Brian Robinson Jr. at the 1003, Zeke at the 1006, Blake Corum 1009, Tyler Lockett 111, Jerome Ford 115, Chase Brown 112. Chase Brown's a dude that is skyrocketing up my rankings right now via training camp reports. That will be, I believe, tomorrow's video is 10 players moving up, moving on up in my rankings based off of hype that I believe out of training camp to be real as well as some losers as well. We'll throw that at the end of the video, but here we'll take, uh, we'll take Zeke at the 10, six and we'll take Tyler Lockett at the 11, one, which was my round nine and 10 picks. So now we have stacked up a really, really solid team. I think a really, really, uh, well-rounded depth filled team. Once we get to round 11, we're going to start just ripping shots on our favorite sleepers going forward uh all of our favorite sleepers are in our draft guide right now so we've got our rankings up there the top 200 for full ppr half ppr standard uh super flex one quarterback defensive and kicker rankings in there you thought we weren't going to do it we did it we went ahead and did it and we also have full round by round strategy articles going up in the draft guide uh this week so the same thing that i did for this video we will have this for super flex as well picks one through four five through eight nine through twelve uh, apologies for some of you guys that bought the draft guide earlier this month. We had a few technical hiccups on the launch date of August 1st, but rest assured everything will be coming out shortly this week and everything on the product page, which I will link down below, will be available to y'all. All right. So if you have not gotten the draft guide yet, go do so at bdge.co. The cheapest way to get it, the least expensive way to get it by far is to head over to underdogfantasy.com, download the underdog fantasy app, Deposit $10, just $10 or more using promo code BDGE, and you will get the draft guide for free. They will hit you with a bunch of deposit matches on your profile on Underdog, and you will get a free square for week one. Patrick Mahomes, 0.5 passing yards, so you get an auto win on Underdog Fantasy right away, plus the draft guide emailed out to you automatically. So all of our sleepers at around 11 or so plus will be in the draft guide. So as promised, we could have pivoted a little bit here and went with a different player strategy or a different grouping of players using the same strategy, using the same players available by their ADP. So here are three different team options. We have the first one that I actually drafted throughout this video and then two others that you could have ended up with uh, if you went with the same approach. So based on these three, let me know down below which team you like the best, which team uh, you would prefer out of these three based on this strategy. As it relates to defense and kickers, I put this little nugget in here at the end of all of these strategy videos. Here's how I approach defense and kickers. I always stream them. Um, hopefully, you know, you latch onto one that's really good. So you don't really have to stream anymore, but my last two rounds are always saved for defense. Second to last round kicker last round. You're just taking a kicker. That's in a high scoring offense. That's really all I'm looking for. Maybe in the dome, right? That is one of the tiebreaker stats that we have in the draft guide. Every player has tiebreaker stats as well as uh, full player outlooks attached to them in the rankings. So things like, do they play in a dome? Uh, what is their win total? Stuff like that. Those are things that you were looking for to tie break, you know, kickers or uh, any types of players within the rankings, obviously. But for week one, some realistic streaming options would be Buffalo minus six and a half at home versus Arizona. So you're looking at teams that are favored to win their game that are at home. All right. Cincinnati is minus nine and a half point favorites at home versus the Patriots. The Saints are minus four and a half point favorites at home versus Carolina. Seattle is minus five versus Denver at home. Tampa Bay is minus three and a half versus Washington at home. Okay, so those are probably my favorite five streaming options that are not like the Baltimore's, San Francisco's where you have to jump ahead and draft them. These are dudes you could probably get in the second to last round. All right. But if your draft is taking place far before September or far before kickoff, I wouldn't even bother drafting one of these two positions. Uh, I would just draft handcuff running backs right now and see what happens throughout the preseason. Maybe the starter gets hurt or, you know, whatever the case may be. And then you could drop them right before the season kicks off and pick up your defense kicker based on the criteria I laid out. All right. Hopefully the information that I laid out today was helpful to y'all. Again, if you have picks one through four or five through eight, those videos are also live right now and available for you guys. The strategy articles in depth for both one quarterback and super flex will be live in the draft guide this week. All right. So go cop the draft guide at bdge.co or through underdogfantasy.com, the underdog fantasy app, promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more. We out here. I love you. Smoochies.